What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Boiler Track Show, a show by Boiler Upload of the Rivals Network. And today we have three very special guests, a true Purdue family, uh, the Thieneman brothers, Jake, Brennan, and Dylan. Uh, fellas, how we doing? Doing great, man. Appreciate you having us on. Yeah, appreciate it, man. And of course, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to do this. Obviously, uh, timing worked out well. Purdue just hired a new head coach, Ryan Walters. I will be taking over for Jeff Prom after six seasons at Purdue. Uh, Dylan, we'll start with you since since you'll be joining the Boilermakers uh, here 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 in a few weeks. Actually, um, sure. what what did you make of the hire? What was your uh, re in, initial reaction? Uh, well, I I thought it was definitely good that they at least hired someone pretty quick after firing Brom or Brom going to Louisville, and then uh, I just looked at his background, saw that he was a safety, and he at Colorado and then he coached safeties and stuff. So he's definitely a very defensive minded head coach. And I saw that as a good thing. Now, has he, has he reached out to you guys yet? He, uh, he called me earlier today, just to check in, see how I was doing, asked a little bit about me. And then he uh, explained a little bit, little bit of his background. That's nice. That's nice. And then Jake and Brennan, uh, for you guys, obviously you both played under Brom. How tough was it for you guys to see Brom leave and, and see Purdue enter into this new era under coach Walters. Yeah, man, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty tough at first to see him go. Um, you know, we, Brent and I were both there when Brom came in initially, you know, Brom gave us both scholarships and really did a lot to turn the program around. So um, was really excited, you know, with what him and his entire staff have been able to do, they've been able to accomplish a lot. So uh, seeing him go was, was a little bit sad, um, you know, you know, wishing the best of luck. Um, it was also just a, like a question mark of just who's who are they going to bring in next? You know, what's next for, for Purdue football um, and what's the staff going to look like? So, you know, Purdue announcing that they hired that coach today was pretty exciting. Um, really excited for uh, Ryan and what he's going to do and the staff he's going to bring in. Um, and, yeah, just excited to see how things unfold. I like how we're bringing in a, a defensive uh, oriented head coach. You know, coming from a defensive perspective, you know, you always always like when your head coach has a defensive background, you know, because they gear a lot of their practices, their play calling, strategy, game strategy around the defense, which obviously is a defensive player is nicer uh, mm -hmm. from your perspective, you know, when you get off the field and, you know, instead of a quick three and out back on the field, they run the ball and drain the clock, you know, and you're sitting back. <laughs> Bench relax and it's pretty mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was one thing about Brom. He was because he. He's obviously an offensive guy. So in practice, you know, it's offense versus defense. So if offense is doing really well, defense is not. It was a great practice. If offense <laughs> wasn't doing well, well, it was not a good practice. Hell no, it was so biased. <laughs> how, hey, how pissed would he be if the defense was just tearing the offense up? Pretty, pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah, the post, like the after practice speech would be all bad. Like we got to pick it up. We got to do better. We got to do this, this, and this. And we're, we're going to lose. And then and at the very end, defense, great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is pretty wild to see Purdue. Like obviously historically Purdue's kind of gone after all the offensive co coaches, excuse me, um, but like, if you think about Purdue's culture, maybe maybe I'm just relating this back to basketball too much. But it feels like the culture kind of revolves around hard nosed teams that w would play defense, and it's kind of been the opposite for Purdue over the last what twenty some years, um, ever since Joe Tiller got there. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have that with uh, you know Purdue being the the cradle of quarterbacks and all mm -hmm. the. You know, I like uh, I like the direction we're going. You know, hopefully a little more defense oriented. We all are, we are also the den of defensive ends. You know, so we have mm -hmm. kind of, uh, historically uh, good defensive players coming through. So it's interesting to see uh, how the dynamic might change for the defensive oriented head coach. And I think that's a little bit of what the Big Ten is known for too. It's just like hard nosed physical football, tough defense, running the football. Um, and you know, obviously, like there's been a few teams, Purdue included, in the last. 20 years or so that have really started to air it out, have more of a, more of a passing focus. But yeah, I think that comes from just traditional big time football. Yeah. And I still think that's possible under, under Walters. I mean, he seems like a guy when he got, I mean, he got hired at Illinois. He talked a lot about molding his defense to the guys he has on the team, as opposed to being stuck in his ways and only wanting to do it one way, which I think uh, we've kind of seen over the last couple of years, unfortunately, but 
Um, I think he'll do the same with offense. I think he'll be open to spreading it out and um, we'll see who he hires, obviously, as offensive coordinator and and how the staff fills out. That's a very good point you made about molding uh, the defense to the players. I think that that's very important overall in coaching in general, not just defense, that I think a lot of times you have to modify your strategy and game plan to the players you have. And, you know, that might partially be a reason why you see some coaches who have a lot tremendous success at certain program go to another program and they can't win a game. And that's, you know, it's every team isn't the same. You have different players, um, different preferred coaching styles, schemes that are different amongst different conferences that work better. Um, so it, it's not all the same, you know, so sometimes you got to work with the players you got. Yeah. And then also different colleges are at different places in terms of recruiting, obviously uh, Purdue's not to the level of an Ohio state, Bama, LSU, all those types of schools, but it does feel like coach Walters is, is a really good recruiter. He's a really good leader of young men. Um, I, Dylan, I don't know if that's something that you've noticed just seeing, um, just talking to him a little bit and then, seeing him command the room in the first team meeting, um, given Devin Maccabee a scholarship, obviously. Have, did you get the sense that he's he's a player's coach and he's uh, he kind of kind of leans on his leadership? Mm-hmm. I definitely felt that he was excited to talk to me and uh, like to build a connection there and build a connection with the other young recruits. He said he was, he was making calls all today, talking to the new guys coming in, but he seemed very enthusiastic about starting the next season and like, just getting it going with us. Now, I know you guys probably talk amongst amongst your recruiting class. How much have you guys talked as a group about um, Coach Walters, uh, the hiring, and just all the craziness that's kind of gone on over the last the last week plus for you guys? I know it's probably been a, a hectic and tough time. Uh, I said I've probably been talking to Will Helt, uh, DN from Carmel the most. Me and him are planning to room together. At Purdue, so we've been just uh, talking about like the situation, uh, especially with the coaching staff going out. Like, what are we thinking? And uh, we kind of stayed open to it. We were waiting to see what the new head coach is. I haven't been able to, I haven't reached out to him yet about the new hire, but I was going to do it soon. Yeah, and I mean, for you personally, um, obviously, you guys, you guys are a Purdue family. Your, your two older brothers went to Purdue. What was that time like when you first got the news and and everything that kind of led up to it? What was going through your head? Uh, I was uh, I was a little a little mad to be honest at the beginning because uh they made uh they were making house visits at that time. Mm-hmm. So on the month he announced on a Wednesday that he was going to Louisville, but on that Monday he he came over to our house and he was just talking to us. But I, I never really knew. I knew that he was thinking about it. I never, I didn't know if he was going to accept it or not. So I was just, just waiting to see. Now I don't know. I don't know if he was. I'm assuming he wasn't the only coach that was there. Maybe Coach English or or Coach Hagen. Did they have any? Did they give you any indication that uh, that might be a possibility? Uh, they they were here. Um, they didn't really. Uh, I, they didn't really know. I didn't really talk to that with them. I was just mm. – uh, I was talking to them afterwards, after it happened, just to see what would happen with them. I know Hagen's staying there. I'm pretty sure English is going – is with Brom right now at Louisville. Mm. But there wasn't really any anything beforehand that would, like, like trigger that they were going to go to Louisville or not. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. And then for Jake and Brendan, obviously, you guys had been through coaching changes um, or new new eras in Purdue football. How hard is that on the on the locker room to not only, I mean, obviously lose a head coach, the head coach leaves or gets fired, but the position coaches where you guys are day in, day out, working with them most closely. How does that impact guys in the locker room and guys in the position groups? It's a, it's a pretty big shift. So, I mean, first off, when you get a new coaching staff, so it's, it's entirely new leadership. You're going in a new direction. There's a lot of questions being asked, um, you know, before the hire, you don't know anything. And then once the new staff gets hired, you don't know what they're all about. You don't know the personalities. You don't know how everything works. Um, and the biggest thing for the players is everyone pretty much comes in with a clean slate. So beforehand, if you were working with your position coach, maybe you were working up to be a starter or you had some rapport with that coach, you know, that all goes away um, and everyone starts over from baseline. 
So now you're competing for a spot again. Um, everyone's working really hard. And so usually the first spring with that new coaching staff is pretty intense. Mm-hmm. It's definitely pretty intense. You know, guys are definitely a little more nervous because, you know, um, as Jake said, it brings everyone to the same, everyone that's at the program, it brings them all to the same level. So it's kind of like a tryout for all the guys that are there. Uh, they got to reprove themselves to um, to the coaching staff. It's a great opportunity for guys who are lower on the depth chart that maybe the previous position coach what didn't wasn't feeling them uh, like playing them. You know, this is a great opportunity in that sense. But uh, no, everyone, it's kind of like an open trial for everyone. And you know, uh, as 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 Deion Sanders openly said it. You know, other coaches, you know, they might be a little more uh, low key in how they approach it. But every head coach, you know, more or less same way you know they're gonna they plan to bring their guys and they plan to you know remove the guys that they don't like that are already there so i mean everyone's everyone's got to prove themselves why they deserve to stay there yeah i gotta yeah, trim the fat yeah. i was about to bring up Dion because that his speech was crazy i don't know if you guys watched that whole thing it was insane <laughs> <laughs> um but I, I mean honestly coming in with a clean slate i feel like that's a good thing for the program um, in terms of the competition at, at each position, you're going to have guys going at it in practice, trying to win that starting job is going to make everybody increasingly better. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely increases competition, which obviously competition is always best for, you know, proving the whole team. Uh, one, you know, downside is that everyone has to learn a new scheme which obviously is a learning curve in and of itself, which, you know, you could argue that might slow down development if you're trying to learn a whole new scheme. I feel like I learned three defensive schemes in my time. (laughs) So, you know, that that takes a little while, you know, so, uh, but uh, I'm I'm sure uh, I don't think D has anything to worry about. (laughs) And how, how hard is that transition from high school to college in terms of, learning more detailed defensive schemes and um, obviously everyone talks about it growing into your body get hit in the weight room adding muscle things like that but how difficult is it to make that jump in terms of learning the scheme and and really honing in on your craft at at your position um you know it's obviously a big jump in like every area um just the size and speed of everybody the physicality um the speed of the game the scheme was a big jump i would say it wasn't it, it wasn't a huge jump um, for us, we were pretty fortunate to have some uh, really good coaches in high school that, you know, taught us advanced, um, some advanced schemes and then playing seven on seven and stuff. You know, we've all played with the same coaches in, in the off season. Um, and so we, we learned, you know, college and NFL schemes while we were still in high school. And so it wasn't it wasn't a huge transition in terms of like we don't understand this like one defense, this one play. It's the volume of the plays. Mm-hmm. You just have a way bigger defensive playbook than you did in high school. And so that's the big thing that trips a lot of guys up is there's just a lot more volume to it. You've got to know a lot more plays, a lot more checks. There's so many more blitzes that you have to understand. And then you have to know every way the offense could possibly attack it and be able to adjust to that and know all the checks. And that changes week to week for, for each game. So that's where it starts to stack up pretty quick on guys um, when they start to fall behind. I would, I would agree like the, um, the volume of the playbook and the detail and I guess uh, complexity of the plays was probably the biggest adjustment. We we had a good amount of experience. We had good uh, seven on seven coach in high school that you know taught us a lot about coverages and everything like that. But at least for our actual high school, I ran one coverage that was cover three. <laughs> and when you get to then you get to Purdue and you have you know so many different plays and then with within each play you have subsequent calls from that based on how they line up and if the slot receiver moves two feet to the right close to the number one receiver it's completely different coverage and remembering all those checks and plays and being able to quickly uh see that and tell the whole defense to change the play and audible like uh that was probably the biggest adjustment but honestly once you get that honed in i thought found that to be some of the most fun too just running the defense now dylan for you Obviously, your brothers have been through Purdue. What have they been able to pass down to you or or talk to you, especially as as uh, your arrival date uh, creeps closer and closer to to help you make that jump and and get prepared for the next level? Uh, well, they they've explained everything they've gone through, which kind of helps to to set my expectations how like things were going to go. So like I know it's definitely not going to be easy, and then going in a new coach, new uh, coaching staff will also be hard, but. 
I mean, they've they've helped me with through high school, like understanding coverages and like why this like why you would want to run this one coverage this certain way instead of another coverage, like depending on the offense. So they've helped me with like the uh, the scheming side, like behind football, not just not just the physical side. Hey, man. All right. You can be honest. Were they pressuring you into into committing to Purdue? Did you ever have a choice for real? No, I, I had an actual choice. I was I was able to choose to go around. I vi- I visited uh Minnesota and Northwestern a little bit, but I think Purdue was definitely the best choice. Now, what does it mean? Yeah, we were very adamant about exploring all <laughs> possible options, and then decide that Purdue's the best one for you. Yeah. It was more the parents that were lighting the lighting the yeah, torch. They go to Purdue, no questions asked. Jake and I were like, hey. See what's out there, you know, like <laughs> see, what, see what kind of offers we can. You know, you got, a program, you got a program that's trying to buy you a car to get you to go there. At least hear them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Jake. I remember Jake. You and I had talked about this. Uh, they're like, you guys were like, yeah, Dylan needs to get a scholarship. We ain't going. We ain't going to Purdue for free again. We ain't. We ain't walking on. And they already they already got us on discount, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As they got for free, dude. They did, man. It's like you can buy one get three, get two free. <laughs> now, Dylan, I mean, what does it mean to you to be able to follow in your brother's footsteps? I was just playing the same position and and go to Purdue. And um, I don't know, I don't know if you were a Purdue fan uh, your whole childhood, but what does it mean to you to be able to to do the same things that your brothers have done before you? I, I was definitely a Purdue fan, and then it was always good, like, being able to look out there and see my brothers on the field and, like, wishing that I could be out there alongside them. But uh, it kind of sucks, like, another, like, expectations are, like, they set the bar pretty high, so now it's it gives me something to chase afterwards. And so I think it just helps me helps to build me up and helps to push me further to keep going. And then, obviously, Jake and Brennan, what does it mean for you guys to have your little brother – uh, following your guys' footsteps and go to Purdue. Dude, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Watching, <laughs> watching Dylan ball on the field is, only, I think, might be even more fun than playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seeing your, seeing your brothers, like watching Brennan play, watching Dylan play, seeing your brothers ball on the field, it, 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 it's an incredible feeling. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to at least, uh, you know, Jake and I put in the the ground, the legwork. So now uh, Purdue's laying out the red carpet for Dylan, you know, and it's like, here you go. Here's your starting spot. <laughs> so, I'm kidding, but uh, it is nice that you know he is going there on a scholarship and uh, going to get all, all the opportunities to show he's capable of you now. And obviously, there's not a doubt in my mind that you know with his skill set that he's going to be able to ball out at Purdue. Now, where do you? Yeah. And, and the new head coach being a uh, like actually obviously he's a defensive minded coach, but then he played safety himself. So that that connection there is going to be pretty strong too. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, now, where do you guys think you'll end up stacking up uh, amongst uh, some of the other Purdue families? Obviously, the Anthrops, uh, the Colvins, the, the likes of those guys. Um, how do you think you guys stack up to to some of the other notable Purdue families over recent years? You know, it's, it's always an interesting conversation, man. You know, uh, I think we're uh, – Dylan, like the Anthrops have already all been through, so like Dylan, mm-hmm. Dylan's last one to go through here. So, you know, we'll just got to see how the numbers shake out. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get the Anthrops on this call and have this discussion, open discussion. It would be, it would be pretty fun. Um, they, obviously, they obviously had one in basketball, which is, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of cool that, you know, there's uh, two families there that overlapped and that we, we actually – they went to rival schools against us, mm-hmm. you know, L, L, LCC versus mm-hmm. Garen Catholic. Um, so playing them against each other in high school and then playing together in college was cool. Hey, you know what we need to do? We need to have like a round table discussion over the summer when Drew's back in town and we'll just debate. I'll let you guys go at it for an hour. Let's do that. That'd be far. <laughs> now, last thing. Um, take me back to when you guys were growing up. What were those backyard football pickup basketball games like uh when you when all you guys were growing up and beating the crap out of Dylan, I would assume, uh, him being the little brother. That's why he's good. That's why, he's good. <laughs> That's why he has the scholarship. He knows how to take this. Brennan, tell him, uh, tell him your uh, uh, the return game, uh, return oh, game story. Oh so, my god! Uh, me and Dylan had this uh, game called the uh, return game, 
And uh, because I was a lot older than Dylan at the time, in order to make things fair, you know, it, it, I couldn't return the ball to him. So I was always kicking off to him and he was returning the ball, right? And so you return it. And if you return it to this point, you get this spot, you get a point. If you return it a little further, you get two points all the way to a touchdown, you get X amount of points. Um, so that was the game. And uh, it, it was tackle to the ground. Most of the time I would do, it would just, I would do a nice little tackle and nothing too crazy, but there was one time when Jake witnessed it where I kicked off and I went down. I think I just smoked Dylan, just like deep cleated. <laughs> Dude, he was running. Did not full, up. full speed. <laughs> did not stop. And he's like twice Dylan's size at the time. I'm sitting there watching. It's like you just killed Dylan. Like he's he's dead. It was dude. It was incredible. He's done. I was maybe in what like first grade. You were yeah, more or less. Yeah. You were. <laughs> How old were you at the time then? Brennan? Probably like middle school. Yeah. Middle school age, like seventh grade. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. Lord, you're a oh, savage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Man. Seven years on Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, do you think that do you think that ended up helping you though? I mean, obviously you look around at some of like the the great um the great families in, in sports. Uh, the youngest one sometimes becomes the best one because they had to deal with uh, their older brother's BS for so long. Yeah, I, I definitely think it helped me because, like, they were so much older, so much better. It forced me to pick it up and not play so shitty. So <laughs> I, I had to actually be good to, like, compete with them. So it just helped me to get better. We'd always play a game. It was, uh, it was me and my dad versus them two. It was just in the backyard. It was just 2v2. It was always fun playing that. Now, would you guys win or would they win more? Uh, they they definitely won way more. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember uh, when Dylan was younger, it was, he was still in the flag football days, and Jake and I were roughing one of his games. And I don't know how many guys they have in the field, like seven each team, would yeah, you say? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and we have a video of this, and – Dylan was running the ball, and no exaggeration, he juked every kid on that team. So I think one dude he juked twice. A couple of them twice. Like to the point where they were <laughs> falling on the ground. And this is flag football, and he's juking between guys. It was actually probably one of the most absurd plays I've seen in like youth football. And meanwhile, Jake and I were rats. We're supposed to be neutral. We're just freaking out, going crazy. <laughs> we're going nuts. They had, a, they had rules for Dylan in, like, flag football. He was only allowed to touch the ball, like, two or three times a game because every time he got the ball, it was automatic touchdown. That's not even a question. <laughs> but, now, did you, Dylan, did you play in Westfield or did you play for, like, NEFL? Uh, I went to a, like, Catholic school. Mm-hmm. So it was their own little, like, area for the Catholic school kids. So it was there. And then I played a little bit of uh, Carmel Dad's when I was in second grade. So I played flag and tackle there. Yeah, I played in NFL over in Noblesville, and, like, they used to have, the, like, the street three-stripe kids. I remember some oh, of the coaches yeah. taking off the stripes and let those kids just truck everybody and end up getting in trouble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, some of, those parents, they don't care, man. They're wild. It was always wild. Like, some kids would hit growth spurts in, like, fifth or sixth grade, and they would just be massive compared to the other kids. We were always running the ball, so you're always getting hit by those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hey, guys. Um, I know we're, we're close on time here, so I'm going to have to wrap this thing up. Uh, but I really appreciate all three of you guys taking the time to do this. Um, Jake and Brendan, best of luck to you guys um, and everything outside of football. And then Dylan, obviously, best of luck to you as you, uh, you step on campus here in a few weeks, man. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you having us on. It was fun. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yep. You guys have a good one. You too. All right. You too.